while the share of manufacturing in India's GDP has remained stagnant at between 14 to 16 percent, despite a slew of policy measures taken by successive governments. In his book, Getting Competitive, former bureaucrat and current chairman of Maruti Suzuki, R.C. Bhargav, says that this stagnancy in manufacturing growth is due to the lack of competitiveness as a stated policy objective. According to Mr. Bhargav, reforms since 1991 to more recently the Make in India program have not focused enough on competitiveness. His prescription for increasing the share of manufacturing in India's GDP is to produce goods that provide higher quality but at a lower cost, therefore making them better value. This in turn will help make Indian goods far more competitive globally and also help bring in more foreign investment into Indian manufacturing. Well, to discuss the road ahead, the cost correction that's needed to uh, boost manufacturing in India, uh, to boost competitiveness of Indian goods, I'm joined by Mr. R.C. Bhargav himself, the chairman of Maruti Suzuki. Mr. Bhargav, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us here on Thank CNBC you. TV 18. Sir, you've put together your thoughts on what has gone wrong with India's industrial policy, what's held back the growth of manufacturing in India, which has been stagnant around this 15 to 16% mark for over a decade now. The aspiration has been to take it to 25% of GDP. We're nowhere close to that. Do you believe that we continue to repeat the mistakes of the past, that history hasn't taught us well enough? I believe, Shireen, that some of the mistakes of the past have been corrected. But uh, the biggest uh, mistake, which is not focusing on giving customers better value for what they pay for, which means reducing cost, improving quality, improving after-sales service, improving the sales experience. We don't focus on that at all. And we think that uh, as long as we make some products available at any price, we should get the kind of growth we want. It's mm. not going to happen. Mm. So let's talk about the tangibles then, sir. As we look at enhancing competitiveness, let's look at what each stakeholder can do. Let me start by talking about the government because invariably uh, it always is about what the government can do and what the government should do more of. So let's start by talking about policy and where you believe policy can intervene to help make India more competitive, especially when we're talking now in the context of Atmanirbhar Bharat, in the context of becoming the exporter to the world, of bringing down our imports of higher localization of vocal for local? Uh, Shin, the policy makers have to understand that the world will buy our products if in terms of price and quality they are competitive, they give better value than products made in other countries. Mm. Nobody in the world is going to buy Indian products just because they are Indian products irrespective of their cost and quality. Mm. And we, as I said earlier, we have to focus on how to bring down costs, how to improve quality. Mm. Now, quality is largely the manufacturer's job, yes. largely. But cost has a big input from the government and government policies. Mm. And that's where I think government needs to look at every single policy, mm. every single interaction with industry, mm every single input which is provided by government to industry and see how those are actually adversely affecting the cost of manufacturing, reducing competitiveness, okay. reducing their saleability. So, sir, let me ask you this specifically, since we're talking about policy. Now, the government's argument is that, look, we've brought down taxation quite significantly. And to be fair, we are now, when it comes to tax, uh, pretty much on par with some of the other manufacturing nations that we've uh, <coughs> sort of tried to compete and catch up with. Sure. When we talk about the ease of doing business, we have improved, we've gained ground. Perhaps uh, it continues to be a work in progress. But do you believe that on the cost side, uh, that there has been enough work done and what more can be done to reduce costs? I, I think a lot of work needs to be done on the cost side. And yes, uh, while the, the Prime Minister has done a lot of work in uh, changing the legal structure for doing business, for making it much easier to do business, but bringing much more digitalization by bringing in several new laws like the GST and the bankruptcy mm. code, but those are not things which will affect the cost of manufacturing. Okay. The finance minister has done a great job in reducing the corporate tax on new industry. Mm. But corporate tax, Shireen, comes into play once you've made profits. Huh. 
the first thing is you have to be in a position where you will keep making reasonable returns on your capital mm. and you will not do that if your costs are high mm. or if the demand is not growing fast enough so that you cannot get to better economies of scale all the time mm. okay so, so how I, so i i was going to add that yeah. it's necessary to focus on cost reduction in every possible way Okay, uh, cost reduction is one aspect. Sir. One of the other challenges that you speak of uh, uh, through the course of your career, as well as in the book that you highlight, is the fact that policy making uh, needs to now move towards having much more specialized, nuanced inputting when it comes to economic ministries because the world is changing. And that perhaps is something that you acknowledge as being an issue uh, that has not served us well. Uh, as a former IAS officer, do you believe that there is a need for a specialized cadre to look at economic policy making i think it's necessary for people to understand why industry grows and why it doesn't grow and i think there's not a problem children which has come up today right from the time when we started in 1950 the bureaucrats had no understanding of what makes for industrial growth and they didn't think that cost of production had anything to do with growth of industry mm. and that's why the policies which were made from 1950 you know we bl blame socialism for it yeah. but actually it's not right to blame socialism because socialism can be achieved and industrial competitiveness can be achieved japan has done it mm. china has mm. done it it's possible to be highly socialistic in society and highly competitive in manufacturing mm. but they should be separate should not be mixed up as we mixed up and we mixed up because people didn't understand what is required to grow industry mm. let's talk about what you believe uh, is the need of the hour today mr bhargav uh, specifically since you brought up uh, china uh, you know we're now talking about uh, restricting imports from china by way of higher duties and so on and so forth the uh, expectation of the government is that we should uh, be self-reliant, we should not be dependent on uh, China or any other country when it comes to uh, sourcing of uh, uh, supply and sourcing of material, etc. But do you believe that uh, we are currently geared to be able to capitalize and make good on that aspiration? We can only make good on that aspiration if we understand that uh, we have come to the present situation uh, only because we have not developed our manufacturing industry. Mm. And uh, the Prime Minister has very rightly focused on Atmanirbhar. Atmanirbhar is what when he says we need to become Atmanirbhar, I think he's basically lamenting the fact that over all these years, a whole lot of products which are required in the manufacturing sector mm. all are imported. And he's uh, trying to say that, look, why are we not making these products in India? Mm. And the reason we're not making it, either we don't have the right economies of scale, mm. or the costs of manufacturing are too high, or uh, people just don't want to invest in uh, uh, big investments in such manufacturing facilities. Mm. So do you have hope then, Mr. Bhargav, given what you're seeing today uh, and given where the state of manufacturing is, do you feel hopeful that this will now be a reality uh, given the fact that we haven't seen any significant change? The changes have been incremental, not significant. Shirin, I believe that uh, if more people at the top of the bureaucracy in our economists and uh, our leadership, uh, because the leadership today is capable of making big changes. Mm. It's, it's a leadership which is capable of taking strong and uh, pretty uh, drastic uh, policy changes if it really feels that those are in the national interest. So I think the kind of discussion which we are having today, mm. and which I hope will become more widespread as we uh, discuss these matters and more more people get involved. Hmm. I think once that happens and people start to understand why it is important to become competitive and what the importance of cost down and government roles in policy and how socialism and industry can be separated, hmm. I believe it can happen, it will happen. 
because our leadership is capable of doing it. Uh, sir, I want to pick up on one of the crucial aspects that you speak of uh, as we build out what goes into making India more competitive. And I want to talk about the human resource challenge uh, and the human resource asset. Now, uh, in the book, you talk about uh, the fact that we are looking at labor relations from the lens of reforms which allow companies to hire and fire and so on and so forth. But uh, in your assessment and in your experience at Maruti Suzuki, what do you believe is the best way? Because at this point in time, uh, there is, you know, governments are toying with the idea of doing away with all kind of uh, labor laws. In fact, many states moved in that direction and then sort of have pulled back. What do you think is the best way forward to address this issue, especially when we talk about making India the manufacturing hub of the world? Jane, you know, we have lost a lot of our advantages that we had 70 years ago in becoming a global manufacturing hub. And to catch up today when many, many other countries have come into the picture and are becoming more and more competitive, we have to do everything possible to increase our competitiveness. Mm. I have no doubt that you become the most competitive in any field of activity if all the players in that field work as a team, whether it is in research, whether it's in sports, whether it's in manufacturing, mm. whether it's in any other thing. If there is good teamwork, mm. you get better results than you get by people working individually or even at cross purposes. Japan and China and others have shown that if you work as a team, government, industry, industry, labor, industry, supply chain, all work as a team, we will get the best results. Hmm. The West has followed more or less what we were talking about, high and fire, what many of our industries talk about. The West is not a manufacturing uh, competitive uh, area anymore. The, all the manufacturing competitiveness has shifted to the eastern part of the world. Mm. And we need to see that in our political situation, in our social conditions, where we cannot avoid socialism in India if we're going to sustain our democratic system. In that condition, there is really no option but for manufacturing companies mm. and industry generally to look at the treating labor as part of the whole organization and working with them and making them believe that their future lies with the future of the industry. Mm -hmm. Since you speak about uh, labor relations, uh, let me also ask you about something that you uh, uh, have pointed out in the book. Uh, you do believe that uh, India Inc. needs to look at a much more frugal uh, approach to, to uh, management. You do believe that this is time for CEO compensation to be reviewed. You believe that CEO compensations in the case of many promoters are not in line with India's uh, income levels, with India's income reality. Do you believe that uh, we've, we've uh, swung too much to the extreme and there is a need to pull back uh, uh, when it comes to things like CEO compensation, etc.? See, the importance of peer compensation is uh, not only in terms of what I was talking earlier about building teams within the company, because if you have wide disparities, it's difficult to build a team. But there's a far more important reason, and that is companies need to maximize their internal resource generation mm. so that those resources can then be used for the benefit of the company, whether it is an increasing expenditures on R&D, mm. whether it's upgrading technology, whether it's buying better equipment and all such things. Now, that money has to come from the company. You can't keep borrowing. A lot of our industry has got into trouble because they've leveraged themselves too highly. Mm. You need to increase your internal resource generation. And internal resource generation is eroded sharply when people pay very high salaries to management. Mm. If you just add up how much salary is paid and see what would happen over a period of 20 years in their internal resources, you'll find the answer. I, I, sorry, I can give you an uh, uh, example from Maruti. Huh. You know, we have always followed a very frugal policy, including for remuneration of management. We have not raised capital, but huh. we have 
increased our own manufacturing capacity 15-fold from the time we started, all from internal resources. Right. And as you know, we have cash reserves of about 35,000 crores. Yes. Now, how we managed it, we, we have been in a competitive field. We have not, as if we have been making extortionate profits or any such thing. Uh. But it's not, it's by making reasonable profits, but not frittering away profits in uh, uh, giving large salaries, large bonuses and all kinds of stuff. Huh. Uh, yes, uh, I, th that is a call uh, that you're making, Mr. Bhargav, that it needs to be a return to much more frugal style of management here in India. Uh, let's see if uh, if your peers are listening or not, sir. But, you know, I want to talk about another uh, aspect that you speak of in the book when we talk about enhancing competitiveness, uh, and that is reducing the play of the state in business. Uh, we, we have been used to public sector monopolies. Of course, we have now seen over the last two decades uh, since 1991 the emergence of a fairly robust private sector. But, you know, we're now talking about greater degree of privatization. The government is uh, setting out a policy uh, of strategic disinvestment where uh, in non-strategic sectors, perhaps the government will exit altogether. But do you believe that this is something that has to be pushed much more aggressively? I believe that uh, the public sector, by and large, is a big drag on our ability to become a competitive manufacturing country. The public sector is responsible, for example, infrastructure. Mm. Now, most of our infrastructure has been something which has been a liability for manufacturing growth. You've heard many of the foreigners who have had the meetings with us lamenting about the poor status of our uh, infrastructure. Mm. It costs more, we delay our projects, therefore the capital cost goes up, operation and maintenance is poor. There's no way of knowing the efficiency of the infrastructure. Mm. You take various inputs. Coal has been a major problem. Financing costs in India are very high, particularly for industry because We've used the banking structure for social purposes, and a lot of lower cost loans are given to the priority sectors mm. and such things. And they are, you know, that all adds to cost or something else. You take the electricity business. Not only have we had recurrent shortages of electricity mm. for decades in India, mm. the quality of power has been poor. People have had to put up after generating plants, use much more expensive uh, diesel for running power plants. Mm. If you get gas for running power, the gas for industry is charged at a much higher rate than gas is charged for other reasons. So there are a whole lot of areas where the public sector provides the input for industry. Mm. It, apply, it applied in capital goods, it applied in a whole lot of um, important Input for cement and steel and various things at one time were all state monopolies. Right. So that has been a big drag on competitiveness. And yes. I think the sooner we understand that it's not serving, you know, it's all the games are supposed to serve a social purpose. Hmm. But you do not serve social purpose by making your industry non-competitive. Hmm. I think that's the biggest lesson which we need to understand in government that please keep achieving socialism separately. Mm. I believe in socialism. Mm. I believe India must be socialistic. Mm. But socialistic policies should be separate from industrial policies. Mm. Industrial policies must only lead to more and more competitiveness. Yes, uh, and uh, hopefully result in a higher share of manufacturing uh, as well. But Mr. Bhargav, you know, since we're talking about competitiveness, and this is something that you speak of and you share your own personal experience in the book of having to deal with, for instance, uh, the CBI for almost two decades before uh, that matter could be closed. Uh, and, and this uh, this fear of the CBI, the CAG, the CVC has been spoken of so often and so frequently and so loosely as well. Uh, and this safety first approach in policy making that the bureaucrats have unfortunately adopted, do you believe that that is one of the significant uh, aspects that holds back our competitiveness? Absolutely, because uh, 
civil servants, you know, the most important uh, thought in a civil servant's mind is that he should not damage his career, he should not get into trouble with the government. Mm. And if the private sector is distrusted, and if the civil servant is distrusted because it's thought that if you help a private sector improve his uh, industrial uh, working, then you are likely to have taken money from him. Then the why should a civil servant help the private sector facilitate his business in any manner? Mm. So he takes the most safe option of making a committee, consulting four different people before he takes a decision, mm. and looking at precedents. Yeah. Now, all of these things are not only time consuming and time is money, reduces competitiveness, but also leads to no improvements happening ever because uh. this kind of process uh. will always maintain status quo. Mm. Yes, and status quo is not something that we can afford. Mr. Bhargav, do you believe that this is uh, uh, perhaps uh, the last opportunity for India uh, to, to really sort of, uh, uh, you know, get its mojo back when it comes to manufacturing? We've got, uh, of course, China at this point in time uh, feeling the heat with more and more uh, countries customers who were operating out of China looking for alternative destinations. We've already seen uh, countries like Vietnam, etc., emerge as manufacturing nations. Uh, do you believe that this is uh, perhaps the last opportunity for India uh, to emerge as a manufacturing nation? And what do you believe will have to be prioritized to ensure that happens? I, I think you're absolutely right, Shirin. I think this is our last chance because the unemployment problem in India has become huge. We cannot let it fester any further. The competition from other countries is becoming stronger and stronger. Like you said, Vietnam, for example, has become a very strong competitor for manufacturing. And it's a small country. And uh, if today we have some very favorable circumstances, this COVID episode has given us an opportunity to make changes. Mm. Fortunately, our leadership today is much more positive on manufacturing than we've ever had before. Mm. And with these factors, if we don't do it now, I don't see such an opportunity coming again before it'll just be too late. And I fear for our society, I fear for our democracy, we don't do this. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, let me end then by asking you, Mr. Bhargav, uh, and I want to talk about your experience in setting up Maruti Suzuki. Uh, and, you know, no question about the fact that uh, it has emerged as one of the most competitive auto companies globally. Now, if we aspire to become an exporting nation uh, and, and really not just create and cater to the domestic market, but to the world, uh, quality, cost, and brands, creating aspirational brands would also have to be something that India Inc. focuses on. Uh, you know, what would be your biggest learning, your biggest takeaway? Let's end with that. See, the Maruti brand got created because of quality, cost, and after-sales service. It was not that the Maruti brand was a strong brand in 1983. It developed over the years, and that is what I think we need to do. Indian brands will become strong only if they show that in terms of quality and cost, they're better than other brands, where after sales service is required, that they can do better than others can do. And I think this is where we need to focus. How do we make Indian products desired by others? Mm. Why do pro people desire products? Only because they give better value for money, they're better designed, and they look attractive but also perform better than other products. Mm. Performance cannot be forgotten. Yes, performance cannot be forgotten. It, to policy makers who are watching this program, Mr. Bhargav, uh, uh, you know, what would your message to them be, sir, now as a captain of industry and uh, as someone who has worked uh, with the bureaucracy, in the bureaucracy yourself? If they're watching, what is the single message that you want to leave with policy makers? I think policymakers as well as industrialists must all at this point sit back and think that their future lies in India. If we do not build India, if we do not spend the next 10, 15 years building a strong manufacturing base in India, 
the country in which we or our children and our children's children will live will be a pretty bad place to live in. And I think if that is so, everybody should be willing to sacrifice something of what their present, what should I say, luxury living has been in the past and focus on how to grow industry, how to grow the nation. Mr. Bhagav, always a pleasure, sir. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18 with your thoughts on uh, getting competitive, uh, a practitioner's guide for India. Uh, R.C. Bhagav, their chairman of Maruti Suzuki, putting together his thoughts on what he believes India needs to do. This is uh, perhaps the last opportunity uh, in Mr. Bhagav's estimation that India will have to emerge as a true manufacturing nation. We better get it right. That's the message from him to policymakers and to India Inc. It's time for us to head into a break, but there's a lot more coming up. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a moment right here on CNBC TV 18.